Which of the following is a network security protocol used to authenticate and authorize users before granting access to a network resource? Choose one. Is it A, SMTP or Simple Mail Transfer Protocol? Is it B, HTTPS or Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure? Is it C, RDP or Remote Desktop Protocol? Is it D, EAP or Extensible Authentication Protocol? Or is it E, ICMP or Internet Control Message Protocol? And now, five seconds. And the correct answer is D, EAP, or Extensible Authentication Protocol. EAP is a security uh, protocol used for authenticating and authorizing users before granting access to network resources, such as Wi-Fi networks. And for the incorrect answers, SMTP is a protocol for sending email, not for network authentication. HTTPS is used for secure web communication, but doesn't handle network authentication. RDP is used for remote desktop access, not network authentication, and ICMP is a network protocol for error message and diagnosis, not for authentication. And for the next question for exam, question number two. And the question states, what is the process of converting plain text into unreadable gibberish to protect the confidentiality of data called? Choose one. Is it A, decryption? Is it B, encryption? Is it C, hashing? Is it D, compression? Or is it E, encoding? And now five seconds. And the correct answer is B, encryption. Encryption is a process of converting plain text into unreadable gibberish to protect the confidentiality of data. It can be decrypted back to plain text by authorized parties with the appropriate decryption key. And for the incorrect answer, decryption is a reverse process of turning encrypted data back into plain text. Hashing is a one-way process that produces a fixed-sized output from input data used for integrity verification. Compression reduces the size of data but doesn't necessarily make it unreadable. And encoding is a process that represents data in a specific format but does not necessarily make it unreadable for, the security, for security purposes. And for the next question for exam, question number three. And the question states, what access control model is based on the concept of need to know and is commonly used in military and government environments? Choose one, role-based access control or RBAC, mandatory access control or MAC, discretionary access control or DAC, rule-based access control, RUBAC, or E, least privilege principle or LPP. You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, Mandatory Access Control or MAC. Mandatory Access Control is based on the concept of need to know and enforces access controls based on security labels assigned to subjects and objects. It's commonly used in military and government environments where strict data protection is essential. And for the incorrect answers, role-based access control assigns permissions based on job roles, not need to know. Discretionary access control allows data owners to set access permissions, but it doesn't enforce need-to-know principles. Rule-based access control, or RUBAC, is not a widely recognized access control model. And least privilege principle, or LPP, is a security principle that recommends granting users the minimum level of access needed to perform their tasks, but it's not an access control model itself. And for the next question for exam, question number four. And the question states, which type of malware is designed to capture keystrokes on an infected computer after use for stealing login credentials? Choose one. Is it A, worm? Is it B, trojan? Is it C, keylogger? Is it D, ransomware? Or is it E, spyware? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C. A keylogger. A keylogger is a malware designed to capture keystrokes on an infected computer, allowing the attackers to record passwords and other sensitive information entered by the user. And for the incorrect answers, worms are self-replicating malware that spread through networks. Trojans are malware that disguise themselves as legitimate software but does but do have malicious functions. Ransomware encrypts files and demands a ransom but does not capture keystrokes. And spyware is designed to spy on users' activities but do, does not speci specifically capture keystrokes. And for the next question for exam, question number five. And the question states, what security principle emphasizes that users should only have the minimum level of access necessary to perform their job functions? Choose one. Is it A, principle of least privilege or P-A-O-L-P? Is it B, zero trust model or Z-T-M? Is it C, defense in depth or D-I-D? Is it D, security through obscurity or S-T-O? Or is it E, security by design, S-B-D? You now have five seconds.
and the correct answer is A, principle of least privilege, P-O-L-P. The principle of least privilege emphasizes that users should only have the minimum level of access necessary to perform their job functions. This reduces the potential impact of security breaches. And for incorrect answers, the zero trust model is a security model but not specifically focused on access privileges. Defense in depth is a security strategy that involves multiple layers of security measures. Security through obscurity is not a recommended security principle and security by design emphasizes building security into systems from the start but does not specifically address access privileges. And for the next question for example, question number six. And the question states, which mobile device security feature allows the remote locking and tracking of a lost or stolen device? Choose one. Is it A, mobile device management or MDM? Is it B, biometric authentication? Is it C, remote wipe? Is it D, full device encryption? Or is it E, mobile antivirus? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, remote wipe. Remote wipe is a mobile device security feature that allows the remote locking and erasing of a data of data in general on a lost or stolen device to protect sensitive information. And for the incorrect answers, mobile device management is a broader solution that includes remote wipe, but also other features like app management. Biometric authentication methods like fingerprint or facial recognition are used for device access, not remote control. Full device encryption secures data on the device, but doesn't provide remote control capabilities. And mobile antivirus software protects against malware, but does not offer remote wipe capabilities. And for the next question for example, question number seven. And the question states, which security device is designed to monitor network traffic for suspicious activity and alert administrators to take automated actions to block threats? Choose one. Is it A, intrusion detection system or IDS? Is it B, firewall? Is it C, VPN or virtual private network? Is it D, router? Or is it E, switch? And now five seconds. And the correct answer is A, Intrusion Detection System, or IDS. An intrusion detection system is designed to monitor network traffic for suspicious activity and can alert admins or take automated actions to block threats. And for the incorrect answers, a firewall controls and filters network traffic but does not specifically monitor for intrusion. A VPN provides secure communication over the internet but are not intrusion detection devices. Uh, routers route traffic between networks but do not focus on intrusion detection. And switches are network devices for connecting devices within a network and do not perform intrusion detection. And for the next question for exam, question number eight. And the question states, which security policy defines the actions employees should take in response to a security breach or incident? Choose one. Is it A, password policy? Is it B, acceptable use policy or AUP? Is it C, incident response policy? Is it D, data classification policy? Or is it E, security awareness policy? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, incident response policy. An incident response policy defines the actions employees should take in response to a security breach or incident. It outlines procedures for reporting, containment, and recovery. And for the incorrect answers, password policy speci um, specifies rules for password creation and management. Acceptable user policy, or AUP, outlines acceptable use of company's resources, but doesn't focus on incident response. Data classification policy defines how data should be classified and detected. And security awareness policy um, focus on educating employees about security best practices, but do not cover incident response in detail. And for the next question for exam, question number nine. And the question states, what is the primary responsibility of a cloud service provider or CSP in a shared responsibility model for cloud security? Choose one. Is it A, data encryption? Is it B, physical security of data centers? Is it C, implementing security policies and access controls? Is it D, customer data management and backups? Or is it E, user authentication and identity management? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, physical security of data centers. In the shared responsibility model for cloud security, the primary responsibility of a cloud service provider or CSP is the physical security of data centers where the cloud infrastructure is hosted. And for the incorrect answers, data encryption is a shared responsibility between the CSP and the customer. Implementing security policies and access controls, this is shared responsibility with the customer responsible for configuring uh, security policies. Customer data management and backups. Data management and backups are typically the responsibility of the customer. And user authentication and identity management um, are typically the responsibility of the customer.
And for the last question for exam, question number 10. And the question states, what security measure can protect a wireless network by hiding the network's SSID or service set identifier from broadcast? Choose one. Is it A, MAC filtering? Is it B, WPA3 encryption? Is it C, WEP encryption? Is it D, SSID encryption? Or is it E, SSID broadcast suppression? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is E, SSID Broadcast Suppression. SSID Broadcast Suppression is a security measure that hides the network's SSID from broadcast, making it less visible to potential attackers. And for the incorrect answers, MAC filtering controls which devices can connect to the network based on their MAC addresses, not to hide, it's not the purpose is not to hide their SSID. WPA3 encryption is a wireless encryption protocol but does not hide the SSID. WEP is an outdated and weak wireless encryption protocol but does not hide the SSID. And SSID encryption is not a common uh, security measure. SSID hiding is a separate concept. Ladies and gents, if you'd like to further support this channel, make sure to check my Udemy Instructor channel where I've posted a number of CompTIA exams. The exams consist of 270 questions each and they are presented in greater detail. The link for my Udemy Instructor channel is presented in the description of this video. If and only if you found this video informative, make sure to drop a sub and share it with your friends. I hope you found this video informative and I will see you guys next time. Peace!